biology. So now let's look at excretion and homeostasis in unicellular organism. So you see that in unicellular organism, uh, first of all, definition of unicellular organism, we see that these are organisms which exist as single-celled. So these are single-celled organisms. So those are now the unicellular. Just from the word unicellular, one cell, that is a unicellular organism. So the opposite of unicellular organism is multicellular organism. So for the unicellular organism, these are organisms which exist as only one cell. For the multicellular organisms, these are organisms which exist as very many cells brought together to form a body or to form a single organism. That is multicellular organism. So for the unicellular organism, it is only one cell. For the multicellular organisms, we have very many organisms like human beings, like pigs, like trees. Every other organism which does not exist as one cell, it is a multicellular organism. So in this case, in this subtopic, we are looking at excretion and homeostasis in such organisms. So these are among the unicellular organisms which comprises of the amoeba, the bacteria, the yeast cell, the paramecium, the different protozoa, etc. that we have. So this comprises of mainly the unicellular organism. So apart from that, we see that most of these unicellular organisms are aquatic in nature. It is very difficult for you to find a unicellular organism existing here in the atmosphere for some time. So most of these organisms are aquatic in nature. They will ever either survive in water or either they will survive in moist and damp areas. And that's why during a uh, cold season, it is very easy for you to find most people are uh, getting common cold or they are, uh, they are capturing or they are catching flu. Why? Because during the cold environment, so the environment is moist. So since environment is moist, most unicellular organisms, uh, basically pathogens, are, can be found suspended also in the atmosphere alongside the different water vapors in the atmosphere. So you see that these unicellular organisms produce different waste products. The normal waste products produced by the organism. So they produced uh, waste products such as carbon dioxide and the different nitrogenous waste. So just like any other organism, they also produce the different waste products, including carbon dioxide, including nitrogenous waste, including the different uh, mineral elements that are waste in their body. So they remove anything that is not useful in the body as waste. So after that, let's now look at the process. So excretion in unicellular organism. So how does excretion in unicellular organism mainly take place? So excretion in this organism mainly takes place through the process of diffusion. So diffusion is the main process by which uh, excretion in this organism takes place. So remember diffusion in form one, we say that diffusion, this is the process whereby molecules move from a region of high concentration and to the region of low concentration. That is diffusion. So movement of molecules from region of high to a region of low. So diffusion is the main physiological process whereby uh, waste products can be able to be removed from unicellular organism. So the waste from this organism's example, the dissolved gases, move from the cytoplasm of these organisms whereby they are of high concentration and into the surrounding water where concentration is low. So that is basically exactly how waste products get out of this organism's body. So inside the bodies of this organism, it is highly concentrated with the waste product. Inside the organism, therefore, becomes highly concentrated. The surrounding water medium or aquatic medium is of low concentration. Therefore, these waste products therefore move from the region of high concentration inside, the bodies of, uh, inside their bodies and into the surrounding water whereby the concentration is low. So apart from that, you see that water will move into the vacuole and then, uh, like when the vacuole becomes full with the water, so the vacuole uh, with the water and the waste products. So if the vacuole becomes now full with water and other dissolved waste products, so this vacuole is going to move towards the cell membrane, as you can see. So the vacuole is going to move towards the cell membrane, and then the cell membrane is going to open. After the cell membrane opening, the vacuole is going to burst to the outside, therefore releasing all the contents, or rather releasing all the waste products that were in the unicellular organism. So that is basically how excretion takes place in unicellular organisms. So remember, 
it begins like this. Inside the cytoplasm of the organism, there is the buildup of the different waste products in their bodies, be it carbon dioxide, excess water, be it nitrogenous waste. So after all these waste products have been built inside the bodies of the unicellular organism, therefore a vacuole develops into the cytoplasm. So after the vacuole has developed into the cytoplasm, all these waste products are going to enter into the vacuole. So when the vacuole becomes full, the vacuole will then move towards the cell membrane. So after it has moved towards the cell membrane, so the cell membrane is going to open uh, on the position of the vacuole. So the cell membrane is going to open. After the cell membrane has opened, the vacuole is going to burst open, therefore releasing all the contents, uh, all the waste products from the unicellular organisms and into the surrounding where the concentration is very low. So as soon as this vacuole has busted to the surrounding, releasing the contents, a new vacuole forms immediately. So this new vacuole forms immediately in order to continue the process of excretion in this unicellular organism. Biology.